and you begin to declare your will, God's will for yourself and your family. You speak their names. You, de you declare it in Jesus' name. And then you pray for prosperity. Give us this day our daily bread. And then you ask for forgiveness. Forgive us of our sins as we forgive others of their sins against us. Then you pray for power. For thine is the, is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Power in us to bring healing and miracles and signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be a change that takes place for the glory. And welcome today to Word Alive. I'm Pastor Bob Rogers. And I want to thank you for joining us. This month is a month that God spoke to me was a time for great and mighty things. God gave me a promise. It was Jeremiah 33, 3, call upon me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not of. I am believing that this is going to be a season of great and mighty things that would have never happened to you if you hadn't called on the name of the Lord. And so I want you to begin to believe God with me that July is going to be a turnaround month. I feel that God is going to do incredible healings and miracles. And I'm going to tell you why. I had um, a very unusual experience uh, a few weeks ago. I had an angel come to me at 3.33. Then the next night, this angel came to me at 3.33, and he spoke to me that there was going to be a release of a powerful healing anointing and miraculous miracles. And it was so stirring to me, I went in to, uh, back to my bedroom after about 4 o'clock in the morning, and I began to pray for my wife. My wife tore her meniscus, and she injured her back. She'd been in a lot of pain. I began to pray for her. And then the next day, the next morning at 321, the first two angels came to me at 333. But on this third day, it was 321. It was like a countdown, 10, 9, 8, 7, 3, 2, 1. And this angel said, now is the time. I'm going to do great and mighty things. Now, the Bible says the gospel that was preached unto us was also preached unto them, but it didn't profit them, not being mixed with faith. And I want you to covenant with me to begin to believe for this month for great and mighty things. I have a book that I want to send to you. It's a book that, that uh, I've, I've just completed. It's entitled uh, 30 Proverbs That Bring Health, Long Life, and Prosperity. I've read the book of Proverbs over 600 times and have memorized much of the book of Proverbs. These are my 30 favorite Proverbs and some of the most powerful words of wisdom that I've ever received from God. The Bible says get wisdom and get understanding. Well, Proverbs, it tells you how to get wisdom. And wisdom is the most important thing because wisdom speaks of the future. It speaks of uh, making decisions and what would happen if every decision you make was the right decision? I mean, you bought the right car, you bought the right house, you made the right decisions on everything. Well, wisdom comes from God. God's Word brings wisdom, and with wisdom comes understanding. Or in other words, you understand what to do. So you get God's Word, and out of that Word comes the understanding of what you're to do. And I share that in this, in this book. This is not a, a hard book to read, but it's something that will be a great blessing. Uh, you can see on the screen how you can receive it, but I'm going to ask you to, to uh, go to my website, uh, and we'll be glad to send it to you. I ask you to send a generous gift to plant a seed, a seed for something great and mighty to happen to you. As for many as can, to plant a $30 seed for this book, 30 Proverbs that bring health, long life, and wealth. And all that information is right there, and we'll rush it right to you. Now, one other thing, we're going to go into our program. 
But at the conclusion, we're going to pray, and I'm going to serve you communion. So many of you uh, maybe have been shut in, or you've been in a place where you haven't been able to receive the communion. I want you to get some bread and some juice or whatever you can get uh, as symbolic of the communion, the bread and the, and the, and the cup, and we're going to take communion together. But right now, let's go into our program. You know, it's time for us to get over this. Put your big boy pants on and forgive those who've done you wrong. Let it go. Shake it off. And God will bless you for it. So you forgive your enemies. You set a time to pray. You believe God for your healing. You help someone in need. And the fifth thing you do, you ask God to prosper you. You know, seven is supposed to be a lucky number. Seven, 11, you know, I never did that, but uh, that's a lucky number. Hit the jackpot, number seven. And so seven in the natural is a lucky number, but I'm going to tell you in the supernatural, this is a month to believe God for prosperity. How many need a blessing this year? Come on, how many need a blessing this month? Well, start believing God for. This is a time for great and mighty things. Amen. Call upon me, and I will answer thee, and I will show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not of. Hallelujah to Jesus. Father, I thank you even now for the blessing of God. Hallelujah to the Lord. I just sense right now there's a presence, a blessing, and prosperity. Come on, lift your hand up. Lift your hand up high. Father, I loose your blessings. I lose increase. I speak a spirit of multiplication. I speak all needs met in Jesus' name. You know, there's, there's a young person here. You're believing God to go to college. You don't have the money. You don't, you don't. God's got the money. God's not broke. Just thank God, and God will release that to you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah to the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. The, the sixth thing is, Pray for people. Pray for people. Begin to be an intercessor. An intercessor. I had a very interesting thing happen to me. It actually started last Sunday. On Saturday night, this angel came to me at 3.33. I got up at 3.33. I went there and prayed. And I thought maybe he was stirring something up for me to pray for last Sunday. And then uh, that, the next night... On Sunday night, this angel came again at 3.33. So I got up, and I went in there and was praying, this, and then the, this angel spoke to me, said, uh, this is a month that I'm going to release incredible healing miracles and encourage people who have any type of anointing to heal the sick and pray for people to stir that gift up. And so I went in there, and Margaret was asleep. I laid my hands on her. I prayed for her that God would touch her physically. And then the next night, I, I, this angel came again, only it came at 321. And I thought, 321, something's getting ready to happen. And so I felt like this angel spoke to me that God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And our nation has sowed much sin and much wickedness. And the month of June has been a month of great uh, iniquity to our country. And uh, I felt like God said, get ready. And uh, no harm shall come to you. No harm shall come to my people. But God's getting ready to do something. I don't know what it is. I'm not a prophet of doom. But Noah, when the flood came, he was high and dry. Whatever happens, we're blessed of the Lord in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. But pray for people. There was a pastor who was in prayer, and God spoke to him. And he got up. It was already uh, uh, in, the, in the evening. And he felt led to go pray for a family who lived out in a rural area. Uh, area. And so he drove over to their home. By now it was dark. Uh, no one was home. And so he just began to uh, get out of the car, and he went over to the barn. And there by the barn, he stood and he prayed. He said, Father, 
And I felt you led me over here. And I pray for this family. I pray you will protect them. No evil will befall them. I speak health to him. Father, if anyone would come and try to rob them or harm them, I pray your angels would go against them and they would be paralyzed in the name of the Lord. And then he felt that anointing lift and he went home. Well, several months later, he was uh, doing a service at one of the prisons. And a man came to him and he said, Pastor so-and-so, he said, uh, he called him by name. He said, do I know you? He said, no, but I know you. He said, you came to this farmhouse. He said, I was hiding in the barn and I was waiting for this uh, family to come home. And actually, when you pulled in, I thought you were uh, the people that lived there. And I was planning to kill you and to rob you. But when you begin to pray, you prayed that the angel of God would protect that family and paralyze anyone that would try to harm them. Then he showed him his arm. He said, that very moment you spoke those words, my right arm became paralyzed, and I've not been able to move it since. He said, I got arrested later for something else, other charges. But he said, your prayer, your prayer kept me from killing you. God wants us to pray for people. And people are very open to prayer. I've never had anybody that uh, turned down prayer. Um, I, I, have a, I have a boat. And I took my boat over to this shop. And uh, the lady who was waiting, her name was Hannah. And she was waiting on me, and I was talking to her, and she was having trouble moving. And I said, what's wrong? She said, I hurt my back. And I said, well, let me pray for you. I believe God could touch you. Well, that embarrassed her. And uh, so anyway, we, we talked about some other things. And I got ready to leave, and I said, oh, I forgot. I'm gonna, I want to pray for you. And so the owner there said, well, why don't you all go into this back room? So we went into the back room, and she shut the door so nobody could hear me pray, and she, no one would see her being prayed for. And I prayed for her, and God instantly healed her. She began to cry, and she said, there is no pain, and she was moving. So the owner came into the room, and he said, what's wrong? She said, I'm healed. He prayed for me, and she was crying, and he said, are you really, are you really free from pain? She's moving around, and... She said, I really am. And I said, well, praise God. And I left. Well, the next week I came in and the, the owner's wife was working there. And, uh, and so I said, well, I'm, I'm here to see so-and-so. And she said, well, that's my husband. And she said, are you Pastor Bob Rogers? And I said, yes. Yeah. She said, I've heard all about you. I heard what happened. She said, I want you to pray for me too. But people need prayer. And if you've got enough boldness to pray, then that's enough faith to, for God to meet them. Oh, hallelujah to Jesus. So number one, we forgive everybody. Number two, we take a time to pray. Number three, we ask healing and strength for us. Number four, we help the needy. We help somebody this month. Number five, we ask God to prosper us. Number six, we... We pray for people. We intercede. And number seven, we are soul winners. And this is a month to ask God to help you to lead somebody to Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. How many know somebody that's not saved? Come on, raise your hand if you know somebody's not saved. We all know somebody's not saved. And leading somebody to the Lord is the easiest thing in the world. It's, it's very interesting. What would you say? Listen, let me, let me pray for you. Let me pray that God will bless you. Everybody wants to get blessed. I just feel like God wants to bless you. Lord, I pray for your blessing upon this, this wonderful friend. I pray, God, you'd do something good for them. And then you say, pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus. And they start repeating their prayer. You've got a plan for my life. You've got a plan for my life. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Come inside of me. Set me free from the power of the devil. 
And you pray for them and you have them to pray with you. And people want to get saved. They just don't know how to get saved. One time I was talking to this couple and I asked how long they've been married. They said, well, we're really not married. And I said, why don't you get married? They said, well, we don't know how to get married. I said, well, I know how to get married. And I told them how to get married. And I, I gave them the money for a wedding license. So they went down and got the wedding license. They came to church the next Sunday, and I married them. People don't know how to get saved. And so you show them how to get saved. During the time of the Civil War, uh, there were over half a million northern soldiers in the northern army that were killed. Over 250,000 southern soldiers were killed. Many were injured, left maimed. I had a, a great grandfather who fought for the North. He was out of Indiana, and they shot his leg off. He had a, a pegged leg that he went around till his death. But there was a, a young soldier who joined. The fact is, he was so young that they made him a drummer boy. He was small in, in stature, and he was, he was wounded at Gettysburg. Many people were killed there. And they brought 17 of those uh, that uh, would have to be amputated, their legs, their arms. And this boy was one of those. And uh, when they came to this, uh, this boy, the doctor was Jewish. And he, he told the story how he told him, he said, I'm going to have to give you chloroform and I'm going to have to amputate your leg and your right arm. And I want to put you out because it's, it's going to be unbearable. He said, doctor, he said, I got saved when I was five years old. And my mother prays for me every day. And I'm going to trust Jesus. And I don't want to take the chloroform. He said, well, let me give you some brandy because this is going to be incredibly uh, painful. And I don't know if you can sustain the pain. You may die. He said, when I was nine years old, my mother laid hands on me and uh, she prayed that I would never drink alcohol. And I've kept that promise to God. I don't want any brandy. And so by taking his shirt and put it in his mouth, the doctor began to saw his leg off. He said, the boy, he said, Jesus, Jesus. He could hear him mutter, please help me. Then he amputated his arm as well. In the next two days, 16 of those who he had amputated a part of their limbs died. This boy was the only survivor. He checked on him to see if he was alive and he was surviving. Um, the chaplain came. The chaplain knew the boy because he had been at chapel. And he told the chaplain, he said, here's my Bible. And if I don't make it, I want you to send this back to my mother with this letter that I've written. On the fifth day, uh, they came to the doctor and they said the uh, young boy, his name was Charlie, uh, Charlie uh, Colson. He said, Charlie wants to see you. So he went to see the young boy, and he said, Doctor, he said, from the that first day when you amputated my leg and my arm, I began to pray that you would become a Christian. And I want to invite you to become a Christian. He said, well, Charlie, I'm a Jew, and I'm happy to be a Jew and he said, well, my best friend's a Jew. Jesus was Jewish. He said, well, he said, I'm, I'm not ready to accept Jesus right now. And so that night, Charlie died. The doctor was so impressed with this young boy that he arranged where he would be buried in a lieutenant's coffin, an officer's coffin. He bought a new uniform for him, and he rode three miles to the burial. He said he had never done that for any of the other patients. 
And it was something that he could not get away from. He said, I, I don't remember him preaching to me, but I remember that young boy. And 10 years later, that Jewish doctor accepted Jesus. So he told he was in New York, and it was about 18 months after he accepted Christ. And he went one night to a prayer meeting. And at that prayer meeting, an elderly lady stood up, and she said, I, I, I came tonight, and I want to give a testimony. She said, I lost my son, Charlie, in the Civil War. He was 17, but not only was he a, a warrior for righteousness, he was a warrior for God. And he wrote me a letter, and he told me how he had prayed for his Jewish doctor to get saved. And I've kept praying for him all these years. And when he told that story, the doctor stood up and he said, let me interrupt. He said, those prayers were answered. I am that Jewish doctor. Hallelujah to Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a great big praise to him. This is a month of great and mighty things to take place. I want us all to stand. Everyone standing. I want you to lay your hand here on your chest. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you to anoint me to be a servant of God, to be a real Christian, and to live for you. Let this month be a time I draw closer to you than ever before. Now, with nobody looking around, if you're here and you say, Pastor, I'm not right with God, but I want to be. Would you pray for me? Can I see your hand? Slip your hand up. Yes, over here, over here. Are there those that are here who say, Pastor, I'm, I'm not right where I should be, but I want to draw close to God this month. Can I see your hand? Lift your hand up as well. Yes, yes, yes. I want you to reach over everyone and join hands with people on either side of you. And I want us to continue this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, be merciful to me a sinner. Forgive me of every sin, of every weakness, of every stronghold. Father, cleanse me and set me free from the power of the devil. Devil, you're a liar. There's no truth in you. And everything you've told me, God shall do the opposite. Now, Father, cleanse me. Make me pure. Send the right people across my pathway that I can be the person you've called me to be. In Jesus' name. Now, get out of my life. Get out of my house. I'm going to serve the Lord. Now, bless those on either side of me. I speak something good, something powerful to happen in Jesus' name. Now I want everyone to lay your hand on your head. I loose today the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I loose the power of the Holy Spirit. And I decree you're a soul winner. I want everyone to say I'm a soul winner. Well, praise God. I hope you enjoyed today's program. And again, I want to encourage you. Uh, to get the book that I've, I've written. I've written it for you. I've written it to be a blessing to you. Uh, you can go to my website, bobrogersministries.org, and it shows how you can get that book. And uh, I ask you to plant a seed, and as many as can to plant a seed of $30. And I'll rush this book to you, 30 Proverbs that bring health, long life, and prosperity. And uh, you'll get it within just uh, a few days. And uh, it'll bless you. But I want to take communion. And if you don't have your em emblems of communion, uh, I want you to go get something. Get some bread. Uh, get some juice if you have juice. If you don't, uh, you know, I've, I've done whatever I can do sometimes when I want to take communion. I've taken it with coffee. I took it with Coke. And uh, they become emblems. They become symbols. And, but the, the, the true power is in the faith. The faith believing God, that God's going to do something. 
This is a picture. This is an invitation where you're inviting Jesus to come right now into your room, to come right now and sit down beside you. You may be on the couch. You may be at the kitchen table, wherever you are. Jesus, when we take the communion, comes right to where you are. And everything he did at the cross is covered right here in this communion. The communion was a picture, actually, of the Seder meal that took place at Passover. The Jews would take this Seder meal, and in that Seder meal, there was victory. There was healings. Many people would get healed when they ate the Seder meal. The Bible says in Psalms, he brought them forth with silver and with gold, and there was not a feeble one amongst the tribes. So in the Passover, there was healing, there was prosperity, and there was deliverance. And they could only do it once a year. Once a year, they would wait. They would wait till the Passover and to celebrate the Passover. And then many, as they would go through there, they would believe God and actually be healed. So Paul had this revelation. He said, I received this of the Lord. I mean, it was not something he was taught. It was something that Jesus showed him, that we could take the communion and it was just like the miracles that happened at the Passover. So everything that happened at the cross would happen to us. And so he says, as often as you do it, in other words, you don't have to wait for one time a year, but you can take this every day. You can take it once a week. You can take it once a month. As often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me discerning the Lord's body. And then he calls it the cup of blessing. So when we eat today, there's a blessing that's going to come on you that would not have happened if you hadn't taken the communion with us. Are you ready? I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I belong to you. I'm not a part of the devil's crowd. I'm a part of the body of Christ. Cleanse me from every sin. Take out of me what the devil's put in me. Pray it with me and put back in me what the devil's taken out of me in Jesus' name. By your stripes I'm healed. Through the crown of thorns I'm prosperous. The curse is broken. I receive forgiveness in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's eat together. Let's drink together. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's program. And again, go to my website, bobrogersministries.org, and it shows you how you can get the book, 30 Proverbs That Bring Health, Long Life, and Prosperity. I know you'll enjoy it. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you next week at the same time. Signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be a change that takes place for the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name.